Good evening guys and welcome back to my channel. So if you guys watch my videos you know that I have just over 50 perfumes which even to me seems like a lot of perfumes. I certainly don't need that many and ideally I would have 20 to 30 sort of go-to lifers that I just keep on wearing and keep on repurchasing. That would be definitely a more normal thing to do and it would make my life a lot simpler but as many of you guys know I live a large portion of my life very much as a minimalist but I do have a a little bit of an addiction to perfumes so I thought I would do a little bit of an exercise that would be kind of fun and that was to sort of shop my own collection or ask myself the question if my house was god forbid to burn down or I had to move continents or something and I could only take a few things with me or I had to completely start over which ones would I go out and repurchase immediately? So this was really fun for me and it was also kind of eye-opening because sometimes what you think are your favorite things, shoes, handbags, perfumes, are not really your favorites. But when you ask yourself the question, what if I had to start over? What if I had to completely repurchase? What would I rebuy? This really puts it into perspective what your real favorites are and where you're really at with your perfume collection or handbag collection or what have you. So I thought that I would share this with you guys today. It is very Fun. I encourage you to go ahead and try this yourself if you haven't before and what I would say is don't put a number on it don't tell yourself which five or which ten because then you really put yourself in a box what I would suggest is just to ask yourself which ones would be my top priorities and you'll know when it's the right number so for me this was about 14 which sounds like a lot but really it's not that many considering my whole collection is over 50 so if you're interested to see which fragrances these are then stay tuned also if this is your first First time here I would love if you would consider subscribing on this channel we do talk mostly about fragrance but we also sometimes do a little bit of luxury lifestyle minimalism decluttering and home decor and without further ado let's get started okay guys so before we begin I'll let you know the new candle that I'm burning as well this one I recently purchased from I think home sense and I really really like it it's just a really soft kind of like a natural smelling beautiful candle and it makes my whole place smell really really luxe and we are working with my gold perfume tray that is on my bookshelf again. So I've taken the fragrances that I'm going to be talking about and just kind of put them here on this tray. And I'm not going to go in any particular order. I'm not going to go through the notes really in depth. It's just going to be like a quick peruse through these fragrances. So yeah, the ones that made it onto this tray, I guess you could say were influenced by what I wear the most often, what some of the ones that I reach for the most often are, whether or not I wear them or just love to come up to them and smell them. And a lot of them are some of my most loved fragrances. So you guys will see that trend as we go through them. So let's start out in the very back. And for those of you who are going to comment, move your perfumes away from the candle. Don't worry, everything's gonna be fine. All right, so the first one on this list is Kayali Vanilla 28, and you can see the nice little dent that I've put into this one. I love this one. You guys know that if you watch my channel, and this one was a very obvious um, immediate repurchase for me because it's one that I find so wearable, and it's such a beautiful, feminine, sexy, sweet vanilla. I love this. This is like, to me, it's one of the most perfect easy grab and go vanillas and it's not super super expensive either this one is about a hundred dollars for the 50 ml so there are other vanillas that I really like like the Tihota, which I'm still contemplating but this one definitely for me is like a must-have vanilla so that is the first one that I kind of thought about repurchasing Similar to that one in the back, we have Montel Chocolate Greedy. Now, this is one that I didn't think was going to be a favorite of mine, and this has become one of my most loved fragrances. I have been enjoying wearing this so much, you guys, I can't even tell you. So this is like a powdery, chocolatey, vanilla fragrance. There's also a little bit of dried fruits in there. What I mostly get from this is just a beautiful, kind of a pastry, chocolate cake, sort of a chocolate smell. And then there's also this underlying vanilla. And when I tell you this lasts all day on your skin, in your hair, on your clothing, I am telling you this lasts all day. I love this fragrance so much. And one of my pet peeves is that I can't see how much is left. Um, that kind of bothers me because I think I've used up like a pretty good chunk already, but this has been, this has become one of my favorite perfumes as of late. So that is Montal Chocolate Greedy. Love that one. Beside it is a new favorite and this is Flora Botanica. This is, um, it's interesting to me that this is in my must repurchase. This one surprises me that it is on that list because it's very new to my collection. This is a beautiful green, minty, fresh, 
earthy, woody, ambery rose fragrance. It's got so many facets to it. It's just a beautiful, long-lasting rose fragrance, and I'm addicted to it. I can't stop sniffing it. I haven't really worn it much yet because the weather has not been appropriate, and as I've told you guys before, it doesn't really work for me in cold weather. I don't like the way it smells in cold weather. It just gets it's like too sharp. Like the greenness is, it's like having a freshly cut rose in the middle of winter. It just doesn't really work. Um, but I really, really like the scent. So this is definitely on my would have to repurchase immediately. Also because I hear it's going to be discontinued. So that's why another reason why I would want to repurchase it right away. Super, super heavy bottle. Beside that, we have one of my long-standing favorite fragrances, and that is Delina Exclusa from Parfums de Marly. I don't have to explain myself. Um, I love this one. As many of you guys know, if you watch my channel, I did recently acquire the Delina La Rose, which I also think is beautiful, but that's not a must-have. Like, it's beautiful, and I will use it a lot during the spring and summer, but this is my must-have Delina. This is my must-have Parfum de Marly. Um, I'm kind of, like, toying around with other Parfums de Marly for women, but this one still is at the top of my list. So, it is a creamy, vanilla, woody, rosy fragrance, and it's just, like, the epitome of femininity and sensuality and beauty and elegance and refinery. It's just perfect. It's a masterpiece. So I absolutely love this one. By the way, you guys, if you see the light is dwindling, that is because it is twilight and the sun is going down. So we don't have a whole lot of light to play with. So in the next row, we have a crowd favorite, and that is Mon Guerlain from Guerlain. So need I say more, this is a lavender and vanilla fragrance. It also has a little bit of bergamot in the opening. It's a little bit more complex. It's not just an aromatic vanilla. It's a beautiful, feminine, sophisticated, classy fragrance, and I really, really enjoy it. And given the fact that I have so many perfumes and the fact that I had the floral version of this, which I actually recently decided to part ways with, and given the fact that I still have the intense version of this, um, this is a pretty good dent. Absolutely love that one. The next one is also a bit of a newer one to my collection, and this is Bond 9 Tribeca. So this also has become one of my new favorites. It is a star in my collection, no pun intended. It just stands out. It's sweet, it's beautiful, it's feminine, it's luxurious, it smells sophisticated, it smells expensive. It has cacao, hazelnut. It also has some woody notes. There's some caramel in here. There's ambroxan. So it has like this beautiful, bright sweetness to it. Very, very unique unisex, but I think leans a little bit feminine and I love this one. So this would be my bond of choice. If I had to immediately run out and buy one bond number nine, this would be the one. Haven't had a chance to wear it yet. I just have a sample right now. So I'm just kind of waiting for the right occasion to wear that one. Beside that one, we have a longtime favorite of mine. If you guys watch my channel, this won't be a surprise at all. This is my Alien from Mugler. I have to always bring it to my nose to smell it every time I hold it. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but I love the way this smells so much. This is um, as amber, jasmine, amber, jasmine, and woody notes are in this fragrance. And to me, this is very boss woman, bold, sexy, femme fatale, take control, demand attention. Um, confident. I just love this. I love this so much. It's a great sexy nighttime perfume, but it would also make a great daytime perfume. I like to wear it daytime summer. I've told you guys that before. It just makes me feel super confident and I like how it works in the heat of the summer. So this is not the original formulation. I'm guessing the original formulation would probably have been too bold for that. Um, this is one of the newer later formulations and it's not quite as strong as I remember them smelling. So this one actually does work in the summertime. The next one is this gigantic, heavy, monstrous bottle. This is Luby Rouge from Christian Louboutin, and I absolutely love this one. Again, this is new to my collection, but you guys, I can't stop coming up to this and smelling it. I am obsessed with the way this smells. This is cardamom, iris, and vanilla, and it smells sensual, feminine, with a little bit of an edge. So it has almost a little bit of a woody quality to it, but it's got this soft, spicy, very sexy, feminine, elegant um, quality to it. It almost smells a little bit like lipstick. So I've described it before as the yummiest vanilla spicy lipstick you've ever smelled in your life. That's kind of what this is. It is a must smell. It is a little bit expensive, worth every penny, 
love the bottle. It's very, very heavy, so I have to put it down. <laughs> but that is easily, easily one of my must-have perfumes now. Um, so moving on to the next row in front of Tribeca, we have this one, which is probably going to be a little surprising to a lot of people. This is Ariana Grande REM. So what I really love about this fragrance is that this is an easy grab-and-go for the evening time when you're just cuddling up on the couch with your partner and you want to smell sweet and a little bit sexy, but not too strong. Nothing that is going to overwhelm anybody it's a very like sensual close to the skin scent but it actually does have pretty good performance despite what some people have said and if you haven't smelled this before this is a gourmandy lavender um, salty fragrance so it kind of smells a little bit like lavender dryer sheets it also smells a little bit like um, gourmand it also smells a little salty it's just got that like sexy skin scent mixed with boyfriend t-shirt vibes like it's amazing I love it yeah so this one was an easy reach for me because I do reach for this one I do like to wear this one in the evening and I think everybody needs that kind of easy grab and go nighttime perfume when you don't want to use your more expensive perfumes you don't want to use something like Christian Louboutin in the evening when you're just sitting on the couch but you still want to smell delectable so that's this one here Continuing on, we have one of my longtime favorites, and this is Victor and Raw Flower Bomb. So if you watch my channel, you already know the story with this one. This one was my signature scent about five or six years ago, and this is the one I was wearing throughout the early dating period with my current significant other. So this one has a lot of really nice memories attached to it. And I did go through a full bottle of this before and then repurchased. And Victor and Rolf is a little bit pricey, but I love it. This is my choice for a, what you would call like a free Patchouli, like a fruity floral patchouli fragrance. It's sweet, but it's got a little bit of a spiciness to it. There's also some tea leaves in here, I believe, which gives it a little bit of a unique quality, a little bit of a freshness. And Victor and Rolf is very unique. If you smell it, you know what it is. Anybody who walks by wearing this, you know what they're wearing. I still love this. And this gets compliments. This is a sexy perfume. This is great for date nights. My boyfriend loves it. Um, so yeah, this is a great one for me. I just always want this one. I always want this one in my collection, even though it is so common and so many people have it. And um, yeah, I haven't gotten sick of it and I don't, I don't think I ever will. It's just such a beautiful fragrance. So in the front, we have Chanel Chance Eau Fraiche. So this is, as I've told you guys before, probably my only true citrus fragrance in my entire collection. This definitely has that Chanel DNA, which is so sophisticated and so chic and so polished, but this has also a lot of citrus. I believe that there's lemon and bergamot in here. And I think there's also a little bit of vanilla in the base. There are a couple of floral notes. There is some musk. So it's a beautiful, citrusy fragrance that just has that signature Chanel quality. If somebody wears this, you know they're wearing Chanel. And when I wear it, I feel very put together and very posh, but at the same time, this is such an easy grab and go, um, must have summer fragrance. So this is my citrus of choice if I need a summer freshie. So when I was looking at the perfumes I chose, I realized that most of my perfumes, as you can see, are that what you would call oriental, vanilla, gourmandy, sweet, fruity type of fragrance, but I didn't have a lot of like summertime freshies. So this one I would definitely need to repurchase as soon as possible. I cannot wait to wear this one in the summertime. And as you can tell, I have a bit of a love affair with Chanel. Chanel is one of my favorite perfume houses because I have another one. So this is Coco Mademoiselle. And this one, again, even though I don't wear it very much, you can tell that I haven't worn it very much. This still for me would be like a must have. This is like a lifer for me. I feel like this is a must have in so many women's collections. It's just a super sophisticated, elegant, put together, classy fragrance. And it just hits every nail on the head. You can wear this for a date. You can wear this for every day. Signature scent. You could wear it to the office. So it's just such a versatile, beautiful, sexy fragrance. And I just really, really love it. So if I didn't have so many perfumes, I feel like Coco Mademoiselle would be I would wear this a lot more than I do now, but I just have so many perfumes that I've just been trying other ones out and wearing other new ones, but this one definitely would be like a signature choice for me, um, top five to 10 for life sort of thing. So yeah, Coco Mademoiselle is definitely one I would run out and repurchase. And beside that, we have another Lifer Chanel, and this is the Chanel Chance Eau de Parfum, just the original. I also do really like the Eau de Toilette. I also like the Eau Vive. Probably the only 
only um, Chanel chance that I'm not crazy about is the Otondra. That's the only one that hasn't really sold me yet. I just find it a little bit kind of basic and I don't know, I just, there's something in it that doesn't, my nose doesn't really like. I don't know if it's a certain floral note or what the deal is, but this one I absolutely love. And if you guys watch my channel, you know that this is my favorite Chanel of all time as well. I just think this is timeless, classy, elegant, sexy, beautiful. I just love, love, love this scent. So this is a kind of a fresh patchouli floral. It's like a mixture between fresh patchouli floral and I don't know, it's just amazing. <laughs> one of my favorites. And finally, we have reached the last one that I would run out and repurchase immediately, and that is none other than Maison Francis Kirk John Baccarat Rouge 540 Eau de Parfum. So again, this is one that I haven't even cracked into. I have a sample that I use sometimes, um, but I don't really wear this one very often. And the reason for that is because I don't want this associated with lockdown. I don't want this associated with doing laundry in my home. I want this to have a special occasion or at least like a good day associated with it. So it has to be like a date or a shopping spree or something. It has to have some kind of a luxurious, happy, celebratory type of a occasion to wear this because it is such a luxurious, beautiful fragrance and it's just one of the one of the most posh and luxurious that I have in my entire collection. It smells like money, it makes me feel like money. Um, it's just a beautiful, sweet scent, and this is definitely one that I would have to have in my collection. If I suddenly had to start over from square one, I would definitely go out and rebuy a bottle of this. I think it's like a staple, and yeah, I honestly don't smell this on people. Like even though it's so popular, I have to say I do not smell this on people in my town or anywhere around me. I honestly think that where I live, people don't even know about this. Everyone I've ever asked about this that I know personally, no one has really known about it unless they were into perfumes, which I don't have a lot of friends that are into perfumes. So yeah. Um, anyways, this is one that I would definitely bring back into my collection. Love it. It's a must have. And that is the last one on our list. So that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these fragrances. If you haven't already, I would also love if you would head on over and follow me on Instagram. And I will see you guys all in my next video. Bye for now.